Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, uh, we want to design a parametric tapering tower. And I'm going to teach you how to uh, define the height of each of these parts by just using a simple uh, gene pool. So I can uh, change this height and you can see that that's going to control the height of the different parts. Uh, we can simply double click on the gene pool, uh, increase the number of gene counts and I get more towers so that's also controllable I'm also going to, to explain about the different type we can produce in this tutorial which is going to be something like this uh, which is also useful if you want to design a parametric tower okay let's get started from scratch uh, what we want to do is to produce first a series of points in this height and the reason we are doing this is because we want to use the taper uh, component in Grasshopper, Transform, uh, Morph, Taper. Uh, it needs, uh, here you can see it needs a taper axis. And that line is going to define uh, the axis of a box, which I'm going to explain, and we're going to taper it uh, around this axis. So the first step is to produce a line. I'm going to use this uh, curve and primitive a line SDL component. So the line SDL has a start, direction, and length. Uh, assume that we want to define a series of length here. I'm going to go to the params menu and use this utility gene pool component. And it's a really useful one because if you double click it, you can define how many number sliders you need. Maybe we just need four, uh, the decimals you need, and the minimum and maximum uh, height of the towers can be also defined here. And you can see that you can change it uh, by these sliders. Uh, remember that gene pool doesn't have an exact number because you can't change these numbers. So if you want an exact number, just simply use uh, a number slider and uh, define the minimum maximum maybe 10 uh, to 100 and then just use Control c Control v to produce those number sliders and give it to a number container we use the shift key and then use this one uh, as the output so you can also uh, use this gene pool if you want to uh, just uh, use this as changing the height really fast and see how the design goes okay so for the first one what i want to do is to define a zero 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 uh, and then uh, go for like 35 in this direction right then i will need another point uh, the height is going to be the z of this point is going to be 35 right and then the length is going to be 74 so i'm going to go 74 and the next point the most important part is like here the z of this point is going to be uh, the addition of these two numbers so uh, this is going to be like uh, 109 so it's going to be 109 and then again we need another line with the length of 30 okay so what we have to do is to produce these points and add these numbers up as we go uh, we just need to add these numbers and the last one is going to be uh, not needed because this is going to be the length of the line the last line uh, how can we do that uh, i'm going to double click and two forward slashes it's going to make a panel and we can just type a text here so if i just type a zero and enter it's going to give me a panel with zero uh, if i uh, control c control control x cut it and control v paste it it's going to also delete the title. So this is going to be a zero here, okay? And let me just control C, control V to copy this, add this zero to this panel, and then use the shift key to add the numbers, right? And what we want to do is to delete the last one because the last one is not going to be the uh, height of the point. This is going to be the length of the last line. Uh, we can do that by going to sets, sequence, and use the call index. I usually like to reverse the list because if you reverse it, right click and reverse it, this is going to be zero. So this is going to be zero, this is going to be one, two, 
3 and 4 and then we can just simply say delete the 0 and then reverse it again so it's going to be the same numbers again. Uh, I'm going to copy this 0, just see control V, give it to the index and then reverse it again. So by simply doing that you can see that we have produced uh, the right outputs. So after we have uh, given this zero and deleted the last one, uh, what I wanted to do is to add these numbers up as I've explained before. So I'm going to go to the math and in the operators you can find this mass addition. If I give it to the input, uh, the result is going to be the sum of all of these numbers but what we need here is the partial results. So the good thing about the partial results is you're going to add step by step uh, these numbers up. As you can see the 0 is going to be 0, then 0 plus 33 uh, is going to be 33. Uh, then we will have 0, 33, 44, it's going to be 78. And then it's going to be 0, 33, 44 and 79, it's going to be 158. Uh, obviously a 79 has been added to this number so it's 158. Okay. Uh, that's how you can use the partial results to produce those points and I'm going to give that to the vector uh, point construct point which is going to make a point in the z direction. Uh, now you can see that this is going to be the first point height, the second one, the third one and the last one is not going to produce any point because it's going to just be a line in that direction. Uh, now that we have all of these sorted out, we just have to give that to the start of the line. The z is going to be for the direction and the length is going to be obviously these length. I'm just going to give that to here and if I bake it, you can see that we have produced the series of lines. Uh, okay, now that we have the lines, uh, we are good to go and produce the boxes. So I'm going to go to the surface and primitive and use this uh, domain box. Uh, the base of the box is going to be these points. When you connect a point to a plane, it's going to assume it's an XY plane. So as you can see here, uh, that's okay. Uh, the X, Y and Z is a domain. As you can see here, it's like minus 2 to 2, which is going to be from here to here and minus 2 to 2 for Y. Maybe it's just smaller. It's like minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. That's the default numbers. And the Z is going to be 0 to uh, 0 0.25, which is exactly what we need because for the Z, we just want to start from 0. Uh, 2 for the height. I'm going to obviously give this number as the height. And as you can see here, the boxes, if I bake that, are going to just be fitted into those lines. And for the X and Y size, because I want to make it a, a simple square, I'm going to go to the math, use this construct domain, give it to the both X and Y. And because uh, if we have this center and we want to make it a domain, uh, obviously if we want a length it's going to be from minus L divided by 2 to L divided by 2, right? That is going to give us a complete L. So I'm going to make this domain start an expression minus X divided by 2 and domain end uh, X divided by 2. Uh, if I give it a number slider, you can see that it's going to be a square. This is going to control the height of the first part, the second part, the third part, and the last one. It's also useful if you want to make a series of stacking boxes with a defined height here. Okay, now that we have these boxes, what we want to do is to taper them. So I'm going to go to the transform, morph, and use this uh, taper command. The geometry we want to taper is this box. The axis is going to be this line we want. 
the start and end radius. Uh, when you want to taper things, assume that this is a box we're looking from front. Uh, it's going to use the axis as the start and end radius. Okay. So what I want to do is to say if this is one, assume this radius is one, uh, make the second one like three. Okay. So it's going to just multiply the uh, upper part like three times. Uh, the best way is to just give the start and a one. I just control X, control V to delete the title. And if I start from one to three with two decimals, give it to the end, you can see it's like making this bigger. Uh, what if I want to just uh, flip the uh, line or flip the axis? Just go to the curve and use this flip curve component. And you can see it's like flipped. It's really easy. Okay, now that we have this, uh, the most important part is to use this flat thing. If true, then a one-dimensional, one-dimensional taper is created. If I just right-click here and invert it, you can see that's like a one direction, not both of it. Because this is like in both direction, but this is going to be in one direction if you need that. And also an infinite, if you just right-click and invert it, you can see it's like not a smooth taper, just a simple taper we have. The rigid is not going to give you anything because it's not going to taper it, so we just don't need this rigid. Uh, you can always uh, play with this flat and infinite. If you want to, you can use a toggle, T-O-G, and rename that maybe to flat and infinite. So that you can do that in the both direction or just in one direction. Okay, uh, we can just turn off everything. If I connect a custom preview to that, I usually also connect a surface B-Rep edge to it so I can see the edges. And now you can see that you can always play with this to produce the final results. And if I just add another number slider, maybe six, that's going to give you more towers. And if I just make this like three, I can control the first one, the second one, and the last one. That's for the tapering tower. We also have the control on the length. If you want to make it like controllable for the length and the width, you can just use another number slider for the second part. And this is going to be also the multiplication you need here. Uh, if I have, uh, maybe I just want to give different multiplications for this. Uh, again, I can make a gene pool and start with three number sliders. Start from one to maybe three. Give that to the end. It's going to start with the first one, the second one, and the last one. Maybe you just want to start with one and then make it a little bit more tapered. Something like this, or maybe you just want to start like this and increase the taper as you go up. Okay, that's how you can make the tapering tower, and that's it. Uh, the last uh, trick you can use for those who are watching this tutorial at the end, let me increase that to four number sliders and also increase this to four number sliders so I can control that too. Is what if I just flip this uh, parts? For example, this one and this one is flipped. So this is going to be here and this one is going to go up 
and so on. That is also really cool if you want to uh, produce another effect with this taper component. And uh, what you just have to do here is to use this uh, kind of flipping these lines. So what I want to do is to uh, go to the sets list and use this dispatch component or you can just search it for dispatch. And by default, because it's a true false pattern, it's going to uh, put those lines into list A and B. So for example, if I connect a list A to this, turn this off, you can see that this is going to be the list A and the list B is going to go to these, uh, to the list B, okay? Uh, what I want to do is to flip one of these. So I'm going to just say curve and flip curve. Maybe we just want to flip the list B. And now that we want to put them back, you have to go to the set list and use this weave component. And the stream A is going to go to stream, the list A is going to go to stream zero. The list B flipped, go to stream one. And again, because the by default, it's weaving between stream zero and one. It's exactly what we are using. So always you can use a dispatch and do something and then just use the weave to weave it back. These two tools can be used if you want to do something and then put it back. And now we can just give that to the axis. And because this is like different axis, if I uh, delete this and give a number slider between uh, 0 0.5 to 3 with two decimals, uh, you can see that it's going to work because you always have a complete one uh, number for the tapering, okay? That's also going to help us to design this kind of towers. Maybe we just want to make this smaller. And if you want to make it into one solid, you can use this intersection solid union and bake it in Rhino to get the final results. That's it. Uh, that's how you can use this taper component to design a tapering tower uh, and produce different results. Uh, okay, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was useful. Uh, remember to like this uh, video so it reaches more people. Subscribe to our channel to get notified for new tutorials. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.